My name is Corey Bauer. I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer, and today we're going to look at Click to Cast. Click to Cast is a software created by Solid Thinking, and it analyzes the metal casting process. To set up our analysis of metal casting, it is five easy steps. We start with opening the geometry. And then we define the end gate and mesh the model. We set up the process parameters. And then we run the calculation. Once the calculation is done, we analyze the results. Click to cast can simulate several different casting processes. The first is a basic fill. Then we can also do high pressure die casting. We can do low pressure die casting. We can do gravity casting with sand or investment casting. And then we can also do tilt pouring. For today's project, we're going to look at a valve body and we're going to look at two different feed systems to see if we can get a better fill within the valve body. The first step of our project in click to cast is to open the CAD geometry. And this can be any STL file. So it doesn't matter what CAD system we have. We just have to be able to save out an STL and bring it into click to cast. The first step is the software will make sure that the geometry is watertight and we have a solid. Once the geometry is analyzed and is watertight, we start our setup. The first step is to set the units that we want to use. In this case, we're going to use millimeters. And then we hit next in the wizard. All of the setup is in the upper left corner of the software. The first step is to create our end gate. And we have two different methods we can use to create the end gate. If we have modeled in the feed system, we're just going to use the automatic method. And we're going to select add an end gate. And we select where we pour the metal in. And that's going to select that entire face. If we didn't model in the feed system, we can use the advanced setting. And that allows us to choose from a rectangular inlet or a round inlet. If we use a rectangular, rectangular inlet, we define the height and width and which orientation in the global X, Y, and Z. So in our case, it would be the X, Y orientation. And we might add it to that face. Same process for a round end gate. But again, because we've modeled the entire feed system, we're just going to use the automatic method on the face that we're going to pour the material into. Once we've added our end gate, the next step is to mesh the model. We're going to pick a larger mesh size so that it meshes quickly for us. So it's analyzing the solid, and it's going to create the mesh. Once the mesh is created, we're ready to move to the next step, which is the materials and the processes. So the first material we define is the material that we're pouring into the mold. So we've got a library of aluminums, we've got a library of steel, carbon steel, brass, stainless, cast iron, magnesium, tin, and copper. For this part, we're going to use cast iron. 
And then we can choose from the different types of cast iron in our library. And it gives us a default melt temperature that we can adjust uh, if we want to uh, once we look at the results. The next step is the mold material. The mold can be steel, cast iron, a couple different kinds of, of sand, can be a shell or silica. Okay. We're just going to use green sand in this case. And then we also define the temperature of that mold. For our processes, if we wanted to start with the basic, we only have to define the direction of gravity, which is in the Z direction, and we can either define our in-gate velocity or we can define our filling time. Okay. If we want to look at some of the advanced capabilities, we just click on the advanced tab. And then the first option is high pressure die casting. When we turn on high pressure die casting as the option, we need to know the first velocity and the second velocity. Okay. We also have a nice diagram to tell us how to calculate those if we need help. For low pressure die casting, we just have to build the pressure versus time for the injection of the metal. For gravity casting, we can do basic gravity casting, where again we can define the fill time like the basic, or we can define the spoon height or the flow rate. So we have a little more detail here than what we had with just a basic gravity casting. If we want to use tilt pouring, we also have a nice diagram to tell us the parameters. And we just need the rotation time, the initial angle, and the point at which we're rotating our mold. With investment casting, same as gravity casting, we can define the fill time, the spoon height, or the flow rate. In this particular analysis, we're going to stick with just the basic casting. Then we just hit next on our wizard. And from here we have two steps or two stages in the analysis. We can do just the filling or we can do the filling plus the solidification. We are going to do both the filling and the solidification. And that is all that is needed for the setup. So we can just hit calculate. Once we run the calculation, we can now go through the results. The first result we want to look at is our filling. So that's going to show us first if the entire mold fills with the metal that we want. And it's also going to give us an idea on um, whether we chose a, a good location for the end gate. So we can animate the flow front and we can watch the mold fill. Okay. So we can show it in a transparent mode and we can show it in a opaque mold. In the opa opaque mold, the red is the molten metal still contacting air and the solid gray is the metal contacting the mold faces. So we can see our entire mold fills and we can see how it comes down through the feed system into the gate and fills the part. The next thing we want to look at is our temperature within the fill process. 
So this will give us good insight as to when we have flow fronts coming together, whether they are going to fuse or whether we're going to have a potential issue with cold welding. Okay. Another plot that gives us an idea of cold welding is our cold shuts. So it's going to show us a visual display of where every, every place where there's a flow front that comes together. Another way besides the flow front animation that we can see how um, turbulent our flow is, is our velocities. So we can play the velocities and we can watch for a turbulence or um, areas that, that don't have a smooth fill. We can also look at any air entrapment. So this will give us an idea of where we may have bubbles left or porosity areas left in the cast part. We can also look at a mold erosion prediction plot. And this will show us any areas in the mold where the velocity of the flow front is greater than 35 meters per second. So this any area that's highlighted in, in a color is an area that we might have a concern with erosion. Okay. And then we can also look at the pressure at the end of or throughout the casting process. So those are the results of the filling analysis. The next step is to look at the solidification analysis. And what we're looking for here is whether our feed system and our riser system are adequate to minimize um, porosity in the part. So the first thing we look at here is the liquid fraction throughout the solidification process. So this is after the part has filled. And when we an animate this, the area in the color is the area that is still a liquid. Okay. So what we're hoping for is the last area to be liquid to be somewhere outside of the part that we want. And in our case, we can see right here our inlet, our feed system with our reservoir of molten material. We can see it has frozen off, and we still have liquid areas within the actual valve body part that we want. So this can predict that we're going to have some porosity in those areas. Another way of looking for that is the porosity percentage plot. So we certainly see the areas in the two flanges uh, where we have potential porosity and a little bit in this front flange. Okay. So that result tells us that we might want to make a change to our feed system. And that's what we've done in our second analysis. So for our second analysis, we remodeled in our CAD system a new feed system. So in this case, instead of feeding into a single location in the middle of the valve body, we're actually feeding into two locations uh, on each of the flanges. Okay. So we just used our CAD system, created new geometry, saved it out as an STL, and brought it back into click to cast we also use the automatic uh, in gate for the entire top face and we meshed it from there so the first thing we're going to look at is our flow front so we can see it fills a little bit better than before 
uh, fills the flanges first and then fills the center of the valve body. We still have some cold shuts. And if we look at the velocity, we still have some turbulence when it fills the middle of the valve area. Okay. But what we really want to see is in the solidification results, if we've moved our liquid fraction in the right direction. So we can see right about right about there is when our feed system our gates freeze off. And we can see we've got a much smaller area that still has uh, liquid material in the valve body. So our change to our feed system has definitely made a positive improvement to the model. And if we look at the porosity percentage, we can see the same thing um, where we have much less porosity um, in our valve body. This has been Corey Bauer, application engineer at GoEngineer showing you click to cast by solid thinking. Mm -hmm.